that's my friend. Um, my name is Maria Arin Bjarnar, and I'm going to talk about the philosophy of V and Rich, a new spin-off company with the University of York. It's a computer games company, and I have to tell you, as you can see, I'm extremely young. My last lifetime is lifespan is extremely short, and in that extremely short lifespan, I've actually watched the whole of computer games history. So in the 80s, we were playing this. Tetris it was one of the games, followed by Pac-Man and Mrs. The real action, thrilling game. Over to the first person shooters in, when we turned into the 90s. And in these, in Iceland, we didn't have TV on Thursdays or six weeks of summer. But here we had and more than one TV station and the internet. It was a mindless game, kill everything that moves, all Nazis, noble um, opponent. Uh, two games today. And now you have to talk to people. You can't just kill anything, shoot anything that moves. You have to actually find an uh, appropriate way through the game. You could advance battle game systems. You could pick pieces on the body and what you're going to shoot, etc., and how likely you are to shoot it. Stunning graphics, absolutely beautiful graphics. Um, characterization, background of the character. Um, he, he evolves through the game and he walks through sprawling cities. There are artificial intelligent characters around him that react to him. The guy is going to go after him, etc. Open street battle, of course, obviously still, but also sneak attacks. So you can hide in this conveniently placed hay all around the city. And why they would tell that, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> and to heavy rain, ordinary, everyday suburbia, people, their thoughts, their hangover, etc. They're going through rainy streets, streets that we could be walking down. And it's all about emotion and characters. That's what we've got in the newest game today. And what is more, our game is going to turn into a big game of life. Every aspect of our, of our lives, our household, our school, our work, is all going to turn into a, some sort of form of game. This is from SimCity characters. Virtual reality is about to merge with actual reality, and we will have difficulty telling the difference. We will be monitored to the degree that the head will always know who threw the stinker. It will propagate to us information that will aid us in our most important decision in life, like picking the wedding dress. And we will be able to share all our moments with anyone anywhere in the world. And I'm quite happy for a former presentation that showed us how that is being done already today. <coughs> and it will aid us in our most important task, both by propagating information to us, appropriate information to, to individual experience, and by monitoring it. And we will have access to game console to control basically every aspect of our lives. And what people think is the risk is this, that it will just turn us into some kind of mindless robot, a cyberman. And I really don't believe that's true. Quite the contrary, I think it will offer us a va vastness of possibilities that is not even limited by our imagination. It will bring to us a holodeck into our own living room where we can travel anywhere and talk to anyone, be part of any society we want, <coughs> right in our living room. I really like my living room, you see. <laughs> <coughs> we already have a taste of this. I mean, there isn't a professional pilot today, really, that doesn't get some training in a simulator because there are things you could just can't train in the real world, like crashes. They die. And <laughs> we will be augmented. This is Seven of Nine from Star Trek Voyager, one of my favorite Star Trek series. I watched too much of it, actually. And, you know, we already have this. We have knee replacement, we have hip replacement, even heart replacement. I mean, when I was in my 80s playing Tetris, I was told I would be nearsighted for the rest of my life. A few years later, just after I had played a bit too much of first-person shooters, I got a laser surgery and it was fixed. 
But the augmentations won't be metallic like this necessarily in the future. They will be more on cellular level, nanotechnology. And we will be the pilots in the sea. That is the actual shift that will come. The enlightenment that will come is that we will be pilots in our own body, in our own health. The physician will not be a real person, but a program on hologram like, a, like in Star Trek Voyager. And we can pick the character. We don't need to listen to his silly questions and bad bedside manners. <laughs> and he will scan us. He won't ask us silly questions, he will just scan us and he will know exactly what ails us and exactly what needs to be done. So that is the future and that is the philosophy of Wienerys. We intend to be part of bringing this future to us, all of us, or the whole world. We want the holodeck in every living room. We want to be part of the disenthralling that is about to take place, as Sir Ken Robertson has spoken about. The linear school system is obsolete. I agree with him. I agreed with him long before I ever knew that Sir, Conor, Sir Ken Robinson existed. And there's lots of people who agree with him who don't even know that TED Talks exist. And it's more than the school system that's obsolete. The healthcare system is too. It's great, but it needs to put us in the pilot seat. It needs to bring every aspect of its therapy forward, and that is the future. We will disenthrall the belief systems we have today. This includes the government. Democracy is about to change. It's going to be brought to the people all over the world, not just the Western world or what we call the developed world in huge arrogance. And we intend to help realizing this by bringing to you a drama engine that helps create stories to each and every of us every one of us, with the doctor hologram um, characters, intelligent characters, to entertain us, to engage us, but also to train us, to educate us, to guide us, to give us therapy, mental therapy, physical therapy, whatever. So that is our aim. Thank you very much, and we have a small outside.